Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be playing blue and white artifacts again. I was really impressed by the deck yesterday and I wanted to try it out more, especially to see how it verses against some of the aggro matchups in the meta. I added one of Thran Spider and took out one of Thousand Moonsmithy to better improve the consistency. With that being said, let's get into some games. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Game 1, on the play, this is a keepable hand, we've got a good answer to aggro with get lost, as well as an iron crag in case we want to ramp. So we see a very fast start from opponent, however I believe that our hand is pretty well suited to fight their board. Well, I could play Get Lost here by playing out an island, I think it's more important to get our tap line out of the way. And considering we drew our market gnome, it's a great body to put out. Button goes for the attack, and a Witch Stalker Frenzy. Play with fire as well, which is a good sign, since now opponent has two less pieces of removal, and we'll probably have some difficulty dealing with the Thran Spider. Yeah, I think the right play here is to just play it out, and hopefully stonewall them. Thran Spider being a 2-4 with reach is a great creature that can even block their Phoenix Chicks if they're running that version of the deck. Opponent attacks with a swift sphere, but not with the adversary. Not entirely sure what they could be indicating here, but I'll block anyway, since we're not too far off from casting some sweepers. We see a play with fire. Glass casket is a great draw. Here we could ramp with iron crag, cast glass casket, taking care of one of their creatures as well as putting out a market gnome to keep blocking. We'll choose to deal with adversary since opponent will eventually run out of instants and sorceries to buff up their swift spear, leaving it to be just a 1-2. We see a Sokan's on. Play land for turn, and keep ramping up with the Fabrication Foundry. Here we're holding up a get lost. We see a squee. It's an excellent target for the get lost. Sadly, opponent will get some explore triggers, but cleaning up the board is more important. Looking at a squee next turn from the graveyard. But that'll be an excellent target for the unstable glyph bridge. We could also choose to use it now to preserve our life, especially since we have the second glyph bridge. I think I'm going to go with that. And this puts us at a very good spot. Next turn we can look to flip the Glyph Bridge, preventing our opponent's attacks, or possibly preventing their spells. And hopefully getting a life with a Market Gnome. We see a Squee from hand. I think we'll be keeping the Market Gnome on board. My Stone and Weak Stone is a good pickup, and I think we'll be casting it 
to take care of their squee. While also still preserving mana to flip our unstable glyph bridge. We'll choose to craft with Market Gnome here in the graveyard and hopefully take over the game. Seems our opponent has an instant. Let's hope it's not a lightning strike. But if it is, that'll be game. We see a lightning strike. But opponent misplays. Taking out the Wander Glyph would have been the right choice. Ah, but a Bloodthirsty Adversary off the top. Gets him a Burn Spell to the face and closes out the game. GG's. On to game two. Here we definitely want to board in some of our life gain options like Knockout Blow and the Wandering Emperor. Glass Casket also hits pretty much all of the creatures. Let's see what our cuts are. Farewell is a tad bit overcosted for this matchup, so we'll be taking that off. I think so long as we remove their creatures and get some of our blockers out onto the board, we'll be fine, so we can do with cutting the top end. And I don't think Braid and Net will have as much of an impact, so we'll cut one of those. Let's make that too. On to game two. Game two. On the play. With a bit of a slow hand. I think it's right to mulligan this. We want to get some blockers out as early as possible. And while this hand doesn't provide that, we do have a good way of ramping into the Wandering Emperor, which should take control of the game. We'll keep. We'll put the Foundry off on the bottom. We don't really need two pieces of ramp. Drawing land here is pretty good, since we have the Igonjo, which could act as a removal spell. But even if we don't draw that land, it should be fine. We'll play Igonjo so we can ramp. Play my front turn. Pass it over. We see an attack from Felden. We could cast the Wandering Emperor here. But perhaps that's too early. Likely not though. We have a good way to refill our hand with Might Stone and Weak Stone, so let's get that Felden out of the way. Runs two of Sokan's on, probably a mistake. Your hand breaks too hard whenever you draw two, especially in an aggro matchup like this. But a Chandra is a pretty scary card to get on the board. Play with fire to the face and a scry to the top. We'll animate our anchorage here. And swing at the Chandra. Explore and hopefully set up a better attacker for next turn. Spring loaded saw blades, definitely a keep. That'll help us keep dealing with any creatures that they put out, as well as eventually turn into a 5 5. We see a squee. With two cards in the graveyard, so not in any danger of it flipping anytime soon. Play land for turn. Animate the anchorage again. And I'll probably be using the spring loaded saw blades to deal with the squee here on end step. We 
draw foundry. And I think we're good to play out the weak stone, the my stone weak stone and draw two. Hopefully getting a land. And flipping the spring loaded saw blades. Our hope is a little bit low here. But after this turn, we'll be in a really good spot to just block any creatures they send in our way and take care of any planeswalkers that they might be holding up. And step, we'll see a lightning strike to the face and probably a squee. We see a Godric instead. It's not the worst. We can take care of it here with the second Might Stone, Weak Stone. While still holding up the Glyph Bridge, for one day get the Squee out and go a little wider on the board. We'll also play out the Foundry, since we can still animate the Anchorage with our leftover mana. Bloodthirsty Adversary, Exiling Lightning Strike. And hitting face. Exiling play with fire instead. That was probably a mistake, because even if this guy here to the top, we could field of ruin their Sokans on to shuffle away whatever they scry. They'll hold back. We'll play land for turn. And I think it's safe to play out the Glyph Bridge here. And we'll start swinging with the Restless Anchorage. This will give us a map that we could use to animate the Blade Wheel Chariot. While still pressuring the opponent. We see a squee. And we're hoping to find something to gain us some life to once again stabilize the board. Market Gnome is just that, and we'll craft it with the Glyph Bridge to gain a life. Glass Cask got another excellent draw in case they get another creature on the board. And I think we're in a really good spot here. We'll hold up our blockers since our life is getting pretty precarious, but it's looking like this is the game. Thrawn Spider doesn't quite seal the deal, since we're still dead to a lightning strike. But we should be able to close it out next turn. We find a gnome, glass casket, and glyph bridge. We'll grab out the gnome to speculate on some life gain. Here we could get five, eight power through the air, deal with one of their creatures, deal with a second with a might stone and weak stone. And attack with the chariot. So that should be game. I 
funny thing about my stone and weak stone, along with a fabrication foundry, is that you could use them with the second ability of the foundry to replay. We'll animate the chariot, animate the land, and swing for lethal. On to game three. We'll be on the play here. I think this is a fine game plan to keep. On the draw, five lands, ramp, and a Thrawn Spider. As much as I want to keep this hand, we're very much dead to any turn one play from the opponent. So we're going to mull here. This is a lot better. Having knockout blow to regain some life and a market gnome to be able to hold it up. We'll put away the foundry and hope to draw third land, which should put us in a really good spot. Turn one twist sphere. We'll play our top land and say go. Turn two twist sphere. And it doesn't seem like they're holding up any spells. The spring loaded top blades are a really good draw. I'm considering not even playing the gnome and getting the top blades out instead. The knockout blow could really mess up their game plan if they happen to draw the one mana pump spell. We'll block here and take the one. Now we got a spider onto the board. I think that's a good choice. We might be seeing a Planeswalker this turn. Obliterating Bolt does the trick as well. We'll block again. Take the two. And I think we're in a really good spot now. From here, playing the Braden that makes sense. Since we can start tapping down other, one of their Swift Spears and still hold up Knockout Blow. We see a land from the opponent, and a discarded Sokanzan, which is a really great sign. Once again, our unstable Glyph Bridge is lining up really well. We'll block the Swiss Spear here, and hope to bait out a removal spell, but it seems like opponent still has none in hand. We'll resolve the board wipe and hopefully take control of the game from here. We see another land and an adversary, which will remove my market gnome and exile it with the obliterating bolt. It's a bit unfortunate, but that's all right, since we still have excellent removal spells in our hand. I see what Glyph Bridge would line up pretty well here. But Thread Spider will stall out the board either way. And hopefully set up an even better Glyph Bridge. We're not in too much of a hurry to wipe them out, since we still have Knockout Blow and the Spring Loaded Saw Blades. Tap down their adversary. We're okay with blocking Felden. And we'll probably be saw blading the adversary on end step. 
the Exile of Warcraft thing. Not an issue. Let's see what they find. Charming Scoundrel. Great draw. But thankfully they weren't able to play the card in their hand, so they don't just get a free draw. It was a land anyway. But now we remove their 3-3 and are once again in control of the board. I still want to hold up the knockout blow, so I'll be crafting the saw blades here instead of the glyph bridge. Using the Thrawn Spider in the graveyard. We see a squeeze from the opponent, which you can reanimate next turn. I think it's right to still keep holding up the knockout blow. Though then again, we are dead to two lightning strikes. But I think our opponent would have used it by now. Markendome is an excellent draw. We'll play it out and pass it over once again. Squee from the graveyard. And an all out attack. I think now is a great time to use a knockout blow. Since we're getting close to death by lightning strike. Craft it with a gnome so as to gain a life and stop, and stop our opponent from attacking. We can also craft the braid in that. I think that'll be the choice since we're not animating the blade wheelchair yet anyway. It was a slight misplay. I should have tapped the land instead of both the power stones so that I'd still have an artifact to animate the, animate the chariot with. But that's alright. Here we prevent our opponent from attacking. They discard a land, presumably. Lost is great. We'll probably attack in with the Wander Glyph and clean up their board once again. Once again, it's important not to tap the Power Stone since that could be used to crew the Chariot. Oh, never mind. I was getting the Glyph Bridge on board anyway, and now I'm missing mana to cast out the Get Lost. That was a misplay. Might have cost us the game, but let's see what opponent has. Attacks with both. We'll choose to animate. And it seems they still don't have any instants. So now we'll animate the Glyph Bridge once again, and this time leave up the Power Stone. Or possibly play out the Glass Casket and deal with one of their 1 1s.
We know opponent doesn't have any burn in hand. So we still have at least another turn to survive. We could look to draw with the Kweepu next turn. Maybe finding a Wandering Emperor to gain us some life. We see another Squee. Perhaps it would have been better to hold up the Glass Casket. But we still have to get lost to take care of it. We see a second Casket. We'll use that. And attack in with the Wander Glyph. Hopefully putting us in a position to win on the next turn. Thanks to the Wander Glyph, our opponent can't cast any more spells this turn. So we'll just block with their 1 1 with their chariot. And that's probably game. There's still a hold, but it was just a land. GG's. Let's see what we have here. We're on the draw with the turn one play and some flexibility for our turn two, as well as a Thrun Spider to get us into the mid game. This is a keep. Otawara turn one into a Sleep Curse Fairy. We might be looking at some sort of blue tempo deck or possibly a Cauldron combo deck. We see blue black and a spyglass siren. Now more likely indicating some demir tempo nonsense. That being said, I think it's best to hold up the spring loaded saw blades to eventually handle the sleep curse fairy, since our threat spider won't be the best blocker into it. For now, we'll play out a fabrication foundry which allows us to get another market gnome onto the field and pass the turn. As much as I want to resolve Thran Spider here, opponent's holding up blue, which could indicate a make disappear. So I'll just pass it over and look to handle this Sleep Curse Fairy. Fairy Mastermind on end step opens the way for the spring loaded saw blades. And our deck doesn't have too many ways to draw cards, so hopefully they won't be getting that much value from the Fairy Mastermind. Now we will look to play the Thrawn Spider. And while playing the top line might seem good, they might still be holding up Make Disappear, so this might force them to bargain for it. No counter spell. We see a bit of triumph, triumph instead. Discarding a go for the throat. Which hopefully means our restless anchorage is going to be putting in some work. We'll play it this turn and pass it over. Our opponent plays a Malcolm on end step. 
I will take the chance to take care of their Merrick's token. Or of their Merrick's land, that is. Our opponent draws us a Spring Loaded Sawblades. And we'll use that to deal with the Fairy Mastermind. We see a second Restless Reef. But our second Field of Ruin should be able to handle it pretty well. They loot away a land and get another Spyglass Iron. Go for the Throats of the Graveyard. Probably should have kept that on top to take care of the Anchorage. And we'll start crafting our Market Gnomes to get some advantages. Braided Net, excellent draw. But we're not in too much of a hurry to play it, since still, we still want to block their flyers. We see an attack. And we'll animate our bird. Blocking their Malcolm. Second main. Opponent has no responses. So now I think we're in a good spot. Play land for turn. And I'll play the braid in that so that we can keep holding up the block with the bird. And start pressuring with the chariot. Putting them on a 4 turn cock. Opponent blocks with Restless Reef. Eating up one of their lands. And while they're not on that 4 turn clock anymore, we're still in a great spot. Shieldred won't be doing, doing too much here, since we'll just deal with it with the Mycelon and Weakstone. We have a Thousand Moon Smithy next turn, and we'll once again put our opponent in a under a pretty fast clock. I'll play out the Odawar here to keep getting lands on the board. Sleep Curse Fairy. A bit scary, but we could hold it back with a braid in that. For now, we'll take care of the other Restless Reef. and keep taking our opponent off the board. Out the market gnome. We could have also crafted with the chariot or crafted for the chariot, but this way we can hold up the activation of the anchorage 
as well as tapping down their Sleep Curse Fairy if they choose to cash it in. Fairy Mastermind is a scary play. We should still be good here. We'll tap down the Mastermind, prevent them from drawing themselves a card. But they might choose to do so now. Nice. Port up to Phyrexia here. Should close out the game. We'll also flip the, the Smithy. And use it to cast a portal. Well, our opponent has make disappear. That's unfortunate. But they're still looking at lethal next turn. And I don't think they can close it out with the flyers that they currently have on board. A shielded here might seal the deal. Ah, never mind. They can just keep untapping their fairy. Ah, that's too bad. We should have just held up our blockers with Anchorage. Yeah, there's no way around this. That's six damage either way. Oh, but wait. Braided net means they can't activate their untapping. So we're still alive here. And threatening lethal. Gosh, I always forget how good this card is. Great in that. Stopping them from activating abilities is relevant in very random times, but when it is, it is so great. We have a land on the draw. Oh, we could try and portal again. Though we'd still be dead through their flyers. Let's see how we could do this. Play land. This is 5 mana. 6, 7, 8, and 9. Also keeping the braid in that. And still being to activate our blockers. I think that's a move. This way, they're also forced to... Oh, never mind. I was going to say they'd be forced to not sacrifice the Spygus Sirens, since they wouldn't want to block the... or since they'd want to block the Gnome Soldiers, but seeing as they got shrunk, it's not as important anymore. So can we threaten lethal here? Activate the Anchorages. Yeah, that would be lethal. If we activate one, we make a map, bringing these guys up to 16. That's 18 damage. We'd have to, have to activate the second. Force them to block. I think that's a move. We'd still actually hold up Braid and Nut to cast the ward or to act, uh, pay the ward so look to threaten here
Good game. Game two. Our opponent was playing tempo. So having ways to answer that tempo is always a good choice. Wandering Emperor is good. So are the Glass Caskets. And we're not too worried about Planeswalkers and Enchantments, so we can board out the Get Lost. Besides that, the Market Gnomes didn't seem to be super relevant, since most of our opponent's creatures were Flyers. So we'll board two out. As well as a Farewell. We'll try this out for the game too. Game two, we have a bit of a slow start, but it's not like our early plays can do much into theirs. So we'll keep this. Not having the white mana is a little bit awkward, but with Fabrication Foundry, being able to be casted off the colored Myrix should give us a good way to get the Thran Spider out. Triple Thran Spider. Is really great against our team. We mill two Braden Nuts and our land. They mill a Stroke and a Mastermind. And I think we'll get rid of the Thousand Moon Smithy here, which we can hopefully get back by using the Fabrication Foundry eventually. We'll play Land for turn, and we'll play out the Spider. Sadly, they could use the Power Stones here to activate the Fairy. They'll be able to get rid of our Graveyard with the Hears. We're still in a good spot. I think it's best here to play out the next round Spider. Which, although it's giving them ramp in a way as well for the Fairy, is pretty much stonewalled by the two Reach creatures. We could also play the third Spider here, but... They might look to activate the Restless Reef, so I think holding up the Field of Ruin is worth something here. Opponent Exiles, our Smithy, and a Braid in that. And starts growing up their vehicle. Thankfully, the Wandering Emperor gives us a great option for handling this Harris if it gets too big. We found land for turn. I'm playing a Thrawn Spider here. Secures a portal to Phyrexia next turn. Which might not be the best since they'll be exiling creatures from the graveyard anyway. So perhaps holding up the Thrawn Spider activation here poses more of a threat. We see in our tie. That destroys a spider. That's all right. We're still holding up the activation. We're also holding up the Wandering Emperor, which we can cast by Field of Ruining one of their non-basics, grabbing a planes. And we do th drew the Glyph Bridge. I should clean up the board. We'll dig with Spider. And find a Mice and Weak Stone. To deal with that Sleep Curse Fairy.
staying full strut. Fair enough. And while we're not holding up the Wandering Emperor anymore, we still have some good options here. We want to prevent as many of their attackers, so we'll keep holding up the Field of Ruin. And look to block their Hears on the next turn. Another Invasion. Losing two masterminds. And I think we'll discard the Glyph Bridge here. Since we'll be able to cast the Phyrexia eventually to clean up their board. Hmm. But perhaps having the double sweepers up is more valuable. Getting rid of the Wandering Emperor might be the choice. We're not too strapped for life, so we'll do just that. We see a Spyglass Iron. And a treasure activation. Targeting their fairy. We find a cut down. I'm curious why opponent hasn't animated the hearse. We'll just block here. And look to cast portal to Phyrexia. Hopefully we've dried up our opponent's counters. They lost a disdainful stroke to getting milled. And the one they cast. Now let's see how this plays. Seems like there's a hold, so I might have a, a counter spell. But it seems they don't. So portal to Phyrexia. Cleans their board up. Now, in the next two turns, opponent will not have enough time to take care of all of the creatures in the graveyards. So we'll be able to animate something with the Phyrexia portal. They animate their reef. And look to flip their invasion. What we'll be seeing from the invasion here. Let's take a look at their graveyard. Perhaps a fairy mastermind or a spyglass iron to start generating some value. We see a mastermind. And we'll pick up an Urtai to take care of their Mastermind. They activate the Hearse, exiling their own creatures. That's alright. Since we can now use the Glyph Bridge. For the end step here, we're looking to use the Odawara to get rid of the Hearse. That way they won't be able to exile whatever we try to pick with a portal to Phyrexia. And for that reason, we won't be casting the Thrun Spider. Seems our opponent does have a counter spell, otherwise they would have probably played something there. Or maybe a removal spell. They animate their reef. and look to attack their invasion. They mill us for four, and we'll destroy their land, which will sadly prevent us from using the Odawara to bounce the Hearse, but seeing as we're getting milled, it's looking like we'll have plenty of choices to animate. Our opponent plays Shieldred. That's alright.
We'll attempt to animate the mastermind. We'll exile it. We find a land, which isn't ideal. We're not in the worst spot. From here, we can animate our growth bridge. And hold up the Odawara. My apologies if you hear any geese in the background. There's a flock that likes to fly past uh, my apartment. So they're making some noise right now. Hopefully the goose mother isn't landing anywhere near me. Our opponent casts a kite to arsonist. And we'll turn one of our artifacts into a treasure. We want our growth isn't bad at all. We're still prevented from attacking. We see an Aquazot. So now bouncing the Hears might not be ideal. It's not like we're getting that much value out of it. I think bouncing the portal to Phyrexia might be the move here instead. So that we can wipe their board once again. Oh. Opponents. Can't attack you or Planeswalkers you control. That's interesting. So opponent can still attack their invasion. So we'll go with the same plan. Bounce our own portal. Look to clean up their board. Ooh, perhaps it would have been better to grab our board wipe instead. Since that way we could have left them with just a 1-1. We'll see how this plays. My stone weak stone is excellent. We could use this to take care of most of their board. So then again, we'd be dead to the ears here. So let's think this through. What do we have in our graveyard? Possibly a spring loaded saw blades. And another might stone weak stone. You also see a glass casket. They could all exile those with the with the hears anyway. So let's just see how this plays. I don't think there's a point in holding up the foundry. Might some weak stone. Take care of their shieldred, which represents the most damage on the board. And look to hold up blockers. We'll be forced to discard with the Aquazots. I think we really should have bounced the Unstable Glyph Ridge instead. I think seeing it as a treasure kind of confused me, and for some reason I thought it would disappear when I bounced it, but it's still the permanent card. 
That was definitely a misplay. Thankfully, we still have game three. We see another arsonist, which will probably close out the game. Our opponent still refuses to crew the unlicensed here. Unsure why, but means we live another turn. Cut down. Uh, the glass casket might be enough to deal with their entire board. Since we could animate the portal to Phyrexia with Fabrication Foundry. Yeah, I think that I think that's the play. We'll exile five ten mana here. Sure. We'll exile the still untapped kite to Larcenist, since that way they can't crew the here's in response. So since these cards cost 10, we choose 10. Does it remove? Oh, it removes the cost as well. Interesting. Ah, oh, but I ran out of time. All right. Oh, I have it a second chance, thankfully. Yeah, I'll Look to grab out the Might Swing and Weakstone anyway. Ah, oh, but we still have Harris. Yeah, there's not much I could do here. That'll be the game. So our opponent's playing some invasions. Looks like they have a Hears. Perhaps some negates would be valuable into this matchup. Let's try it out. Market Gnomes felt really useless. So I'll keep those out. And maybe a copy of Farewell could, do, could put up some work. Farewell over Portal to Phyrexia seems to make more sense since they're disrupting our exile, since they're disrupting our graveyard anyway. And we'll go down on a Wandering Emperor. Game three. Seems like Unlicensed Hears is a great answer into this deck. Really limits our options since we have quite a bit of interaction with the graveyard. Double tap land here. Had no real playables unless we draw a land turn three. I think it's a mulligan. Here we go, here we go down to one land. If we draw the planes, it would be really good since we could get an early Chimiel out. But I think we'll multi five to ensure that we can find some lands. We'll keep this. Bottoming negate and wander glyph. 
Blunt Return Pass. Sleep Curse Fate. We'll play land, pass it over. Our opponent passes it as well. And it'll just be the waiting turn. It'll be, and it'll just be the waiting game for a bit. We see a Fairy Mastermind. That's all right. And an Invasion of Ammon Cut, which will force us to discard. Most likely, our Might Stone and Weak Stone. Let's see what they lost. A Fairy and a Earth Tie. Yeah, I think the My Stone and Weak Stone is the right move. Doesn't line up well into their Sleep Curse Fairy since we don't have that much mana. But think we, thankfully we could still deal with the Fairy Mastermind. We see a third Glyph Bridge in the top 10, in the top 11 that is. And since we don't have any other plays, we'll just look to Craft the spring loaded saw blades. Our opponent has four mana. Quite a bit scary since they could have chosen to activate the Merricks and flip to the invasion next turn. But it seems like they'll just be attacking with a fairy instead. No place from the opponent. Means they might be holding up removal for the or counters for the glyph bridge. So I'll just pass it over to them. Looks like our opponents trying to get another mastermind on board. Or perhaps Myrza would be a good choice as well since It'll lower the cost of their instance. But another mastermind should get the job done. We see Spyglass Iron making a map. And they find a Larcenist on top, which will shuffle away using the Field of Ruin. Now it's very likely that our opponent has to make disappear here, so we're in a pretty tough spot. I don't think we'll be able to resolve this Glyph Bridge, but I think that's our only choice. I don't think this is a good matchup for us since our opponent has a lot of interaction. Merrick's on the draw. Probably won't do it. And a counter should close out the game. Swings for 11. I believe our only out here is drawing a farewell or the fourth glyph bridge. Which we don't. That's GG. Game one on the play. This hand is not very keepable. Too many high cost spells and only one land. This is looking much better. We'll bend away the farewell for now. Since we're not sure if we'll need it. Whereas Braided Net gives us a lot more flexibility. We see Aspara's headquarters, most likely indicating domain ramp. Jemir's Garden. Putting them a swamp away from completing their domain. We'll play out a foundry.
Cavern of Souls, Naming Angel, and a Topiary Stomper to finish your domain. From here, we'll play our tap land and resolve a braid in that to prevent them from attacking a possible invasion. Cavern of Souls naming Dinosaur. Possibly meaning that they have a Discover Dinosaur, the six mana that uh, discards to deal three. But they just play a Topiary Stomper. Further ramping them up. And then up the Beanstalk. This isn't the best spot we want to find ourselves in, but being able to resolve the Mystone and Weakstone here and drawing two probably puts us in a good spot. So we'll do just that. We can also cast the Iron Crag. And we're about as ramped up as the opponent. We're hoping to dodge into Troxa for now. They swing in for 8 damage. And cast a second up the beanstalk. Quite scary. But I think some well timed removal should get us through the finish line. We'll cast the Thrawn Spider. As well as a Fabrication Foundry to keep ramping. And we'll still hold up the Braid in that. Since, while we want to draw, being able to stop one of the attackers is a lot more valuable for now. We see a Ley Line. Draw two. Possibly targeting my Thran Spider. Yep. We'll tap down one of their attackers. And we could either use Get Lost here to deal with their second Stomper or deal with the Ley Line, granting us a bad block, but some ramp. I don't think that'll be quite enough. And even if they swing in with the Topiary Stomper, their only other threat that they could put out is an Atraxa, which would only deal 7. Or a Herd Migration, which would require us to grab some sort of Sweeper anyway. So let that go through. And we see Atraxa. Drawing two cards. Atraxa finds another Cavern of Souls, a Sweeper, a Herd Migration, Leyline Binding. They only pick out the Leyline Binding. We'll fire up the Merricks. Out of War on the draw. Not the worst. We're not dead yet. Though our opponent is uh, showing some pretty overwhelming card advantage, thanks to the double up the beanstalk, which will draw them two more cards when they cast the Leyline Binding. We'll see how they play it out. No Leyline means you can tap down their Atroxa. Go to combat. So from here, we could we could either double block. No, we can't double block. So we could bounce one of their stompers to prevent lethal. We could attempt to get lost their leyline binding, but we'll just respond with their other leyline binding. And 
well, it will ramp us. It won't do much beyond that. So let's just look to bounce at Stomper. We're really hoping to find the super next turn. Hopefully we can do so by digging with the braided net. But I'm not sure if that'll be enough. Seeing as even if we sweep the board, opponent still has quite a bit of hand. Might as well keep firing up the Mercs. Might make a difference in the end. Hmm. We draw the Glyph Bridge. I think we're going to go for it. Our other option would have been to craft the Raid in that using two mana and then activating the Kweepu's ability. To hopefully find a super of some sort. It should have left us with no mana open. Let's see what they have from here. We're dead to an angel anyway. A double kicked angel that is. So let's hope to dodge that. They bind away our Leyline Binding, or they bind away our Braided Net, and cast a Wandering Emperor to try and close out the game. Now if they plus one their Samurai, I think it's a safe bet to cast get lost targeting it. If they make another Samurai we can just block it with Anchorage, so they will probably won't, they probably won't attack, but they might have missed that. So let's try blocking with Anchorage. Sweet. Now we see a Sunfall, drawing them two cards. And before it resolves, we'll float a mana so that we can still activate the Merrick's after it finishes. Six man up. Opponent cast Anissa. Let's see how they use her. They'll destroy my Mice Stone and Weak Stone, which is alright. And they'll make a Samurai with the Wandering Emperor. I think we should just take care of the Nissa now while we can. We'll do just that. I look to flip the Unstable Glyph Bridge on the next turn. Thankfully they can't cast a Leyline Binding on end step, so even if they get rid of it, they won't be able to attack us next turn. So we'll flip the Glyph. Oh. Perhaps instead of flipping the Glyph Bridge, we have another way here. We can exile the Glyph Bridge instead to grab out the Mice Stone and Weak Stone and take out their Samurai, as well as the Wandering Emperor, but I think getting the 5 3 on the board is more important. And we'll be able to take out the Emperor anyway with a Restless Anchorage. Perhaps we should have attacked with the Restless Anchorage first, made the map token, and then used it to craft the Wander Glyph. But that'll be game anyway. Off a double kick danger from the opponent. GG's. We already played against Domain yesterday, so 
we're well aware of how it's a sideboard here. So I'll keep the commentary minimal. Opponent was playing not only the Nissa but a Wandering Emperor, so I think keeping up the four Braden nuts has some value. And instead, we'll look to board something else out. I guess the Farewell. Or instead of the Farewell, we'll board out a Ghost Bridge. Alright, on to game two. So on the play here, let's see what we get. We have a negate, my stone and weak stone. I think this is a keepable hand. Especially if we can draw a turn three play. Here we're looking to negate uh, up the Beanstalk. We'll definitely stifle their progress. But seeing a tap on from the opponent is even better. Turn three, another tap land. That's great. And now we're holding up Merricks. As well as negate. We see the Beanstalk, cast Negate, and it resolves. Great. So now we're also holding up C-double to potentially copy any of their big spells and locking up the board, while also still keeping the Merricks up. We'll let an Invasion of Zendikar resolve, which while it does ramp them, we've officially obtained the beatdown since we're now generating Merrick's tokens. Play land for turn. And now, is there any way to hold up two things here? So I can play a Fabrication Foundry, hold up the C-double, or I could hold up the Myrix and the C double, but not have a second play. I could also just play Fabrication Foundry and still hold up either thing, so might as well play the Foundry. Opponent plays Lands. Possibly unlocking an Atraxa. Now we can copy with C-double, but we see a Jace instead. That's not too bad. We'll let that resolve. Knows us for 5. Which might mean a second Jace in their hand. Quite a bit scary. But we'll just keep up the pressure with the Fire Exit Mites. We see a Leyline Binding. Targeting our Fabrication Foundry. That's not bad. We draw a Backup Foundry. And we'll just play the Odawara. From here, we'll hold up the Merricks again, as well as the C-double. I don't think there's any reason to draw with the Mightstone and Weakstone, because any pressure that they put out will just match with the C-double. So we see an Atraxa, which we'll copy.
finding a negate, a farewell, a restless anchorage, a spider for a creature, and I think Jamil is a pretty safe bet here, as an artifact. We already have a might stone and weak stone, as well as a board wipe, so we don't really need a backup one. Might as well make our spells uncounterable. Opponent finds a herd migration, a leyline binding, a negate, and a tranquil frill back, along with some lands. Thankfully, they'll have to discard at least one thing here. See what they choose. Backup invasion. And from here, we'll just swing in with the team, see how they block. They block Atroxa. We'll play land for turn. We can cast Shamil, hold up Negate. We could cast Thran Spider. And I guess the only thing we have to hold up is either Negate or the next Merix. Even if we hold up Merix, they could wipe our board with Sunfall. They can deal with some artifacts with Tranquil Frillback while also getting a blocker. So let's start getting value with the Chamil. Finding a Get Lost, which we'll use to get rid of the Leyline Binding. Cavern of Souls, naming Dinosaur. And we'll see a throwback, which will handle our Chamil, but still allowing us to keep Merrick's tokens on the board. Never mind, they destroy a Merrick's token. That's not bad at all. Now we have a Disdainful Stroke to pair up nicely with our Negate. And we can start getting uncounterable threats onto the board. Or perhaps clear the way for our Firex in Might. So from here, we'll cast a Might Stone and Weak Stone and use it to take care of the Frillback. Opening up the way for our Merrick's token. We see a ley line binding. Targeting Chamu. That's not bad. And even if they overcommit onto the board, we still have two board wipes to deal with anything they throw at us. Cavern of Souls, naming Angel. Might mean another Atraxa. Our opponent's starting to get real close to getting poisoned out. We see a Sunfall. That's not bad. We only get a 1 1. I mean, hey, if our opponent's Sunfalling for a single Mirix token, I think that's a good spot to be in. Let's type Mega Merix and keep up the pressure. It's important to recognize that Domain always has a lot of answers for anything you can put out on the board. So even though I had playables like the Spider or the Fabrication Foundry, you just get so much value out of making something out of nothing from the Merix lands that in most cases it's better to just hold them up in these late game situations. We see another Leyline Binding. 
Let's see what the target is. Targeting my Merricks. And from here, I think we're good to cast a Farewell. Getting rid of the Graveyard. Getting rid of Enchantments. And possibly getting rid of Artifacts. But their Artifacts don't necessarily threaten too much. Especially since we're at 27 life. But I guess it does open up the way for our Merricks. But perhaps just playing out the spider and holding up on farewell might be the better choice. So I'll do just that. We've seen three Leyline Bindings from opponents so far. And now that's a Destroy Evo, which I'll let resolve. Living at our opponent with two hands in with three cards in hand, one of which is negate, for which we have an answer to. They'll cycle away a land, and it seems like they're getting desperate for answers. I was quite surprised when I was looking at the iterations being ran for this uh, Azorius Artifacts deck. A lot of them were only running one Merrick's land, which I think was a lost opportunity since once it gets to the late game they can provide so much more value than something like the Restless Anchorage, since a lot of the control decks gain their, gain their players a lot of life, beating them down with two threes that might get bigger with tokens or with map tokens isn't as good as just generating two Merrick's tokens a turn. That could close out the game much, much faster. We'll play land for turn. And go to combat. Even if they block a Merrick's token here. If they don't put out any blockers next turn, they'll be dead to the poison. Cycle away another land. And it seems they didn't find an answer. We'll cast a Fabrication Foundry. Might as well with all this mana. And pass it over to them. We see a negate. That's alright. I don't really care for a two mana rock, which I already have on the field. Herd migration. We'll respond with the sainful stroke. Anyway, they have a negate. We have the negate. We see a second negate. Respond accordingly. And that should seal the game. Once game three, we go. Ah, but we see a stomper beforehand. Opponent has another turn, but not sure what they could get that could solve this board state. Cityscape Leveler. We'll seal the deal anyway by destroying their Stomper. GG's. I think your game plan was solid. We'll keep it for game three.
Game three on the draw. Not the best hand. I'd rather have some early interaction like counter spells or perhaps a get lost to deal with any of the beanstalks that they put out. And seeing as the opponent took a mulligan, I think it's safe to do so as well. But perhaps this is good enough. Especially since they took the mulligan. Let's try it out. This definitely gets us into the late game. As well as offering answers for any board state that they show up. I guess our biggest fear is getting milled out by a Jace, but that's a long time from now. So we'll face that when we get to it. Seems like our opponent hasn't done much of anything. Cycles away, a herd migration for land. Which might mean they are in need of some. Let's see. No stomp return three, since they don't have double green. And passes it over. Cool. So from here we'll play land. Celestis is definitely a solid choice, but I'm also debating whether using the Field of Ruin to mess up their domain has any value. Perhaps I could destroy the Rafine, take them out, taking them off domain, but could give them the second green source for their Stomper. So I'll just go with playing the Celestis for now. This could draw out a Leyline Binding from them, which might open the way for a Thousand Moon Smithy. We see an Abrade instead. That's all right. And a Boseju who endures. So that's probably their only land left, since there's no other reason to play that. And that's a great, great look for us, since that card could definitely disrupt us. From here, I think resolving the spider is a little better than the smithy, since anyway we would only get a 2-2 from it. So let's go for the spider. We see a ley line binding. That's alright. Since we still got to ramp. Now we're in a good spot where we can cast either Might Stone and Weak Stone to ramp and draw us cards, or the Unstable Glyph Bridge to clean up their board. They finally cast their Stomper, along with Sparrow's Headquarters. And from here, I think we'll just get the Max Stone and Weak Stone out. Draw two. Find a Disdainful Stroke as well as an Ursa. This should put us in a pretty strong spot. Sadly, we didn't hit any lands, but I think we still have good answers for anything they do here. Tap land means no attracts our hair migration. But we do see Anissa. They use it to destroy my stone and weak stone. That's all right. No land yet, but we're still in a good spot. We could play out the Braden net here. Tap their Nissa down on their upkeep to prevent them from activating her. And still hold up this Daneful Stroke. We see a Tishana's Tidebinder to keep their Nissa alive. Cavern of Souls, naming Angel. And an attack to the face. Opponent chooses to make a 3 3 with Nissa rather than dealing with a Braided Net. Hopefully, we can resolve an unstable Glyphridge here, clean up their board, and start pressuring their Nissa. Unstable Glyphridge. And opponent has a counter. Which might leave us dead on board. Let's see what they have this turn. They destroy our power stone. Taking advantage of the fact that we've been missing on land. So this forces us to draw land here if we want to win. 
sadly, but we miss on land. And we won't have enough to stabilize the game. So we'll pack it up here. GG's opponent. Hi everybody, and welcome to the post-game wrap. Today we went 1-2 and two overall in our matches. For the first game, we played against Mono Red, which I was pretty happy to verse since I wanted to see how the deck would fare against a faster deck. And I think the quality of our answers really shined in game 2 and 3, where we came back for the win. Very much propelled by cards like the Wandering Emperor and the Knockout Blows, alongside our already strong removal in the main board. For match 2, we played against a Demir Tempo deck, which I thought was very strong. They were running the Invasion of Amonkhet alongside a bunch of flyers and some really good sideboard choices. Uh, Molta 5 on game 3 kind of sealed the deal for us. Unlicensed Heroes definitely shines against our deck considering we have so much uh, graveyard interaction and them just packing a bunch of negates and disdainful strokes didn't help at all. For match 3, we versed against Domain Ramp, and though we lost, I think it could have very easily gone either way. Sadly, they drew a bunch of their answers on game 3, and we had to verse a Nissa, a Braid, Tishana Stidebinder, alongside a well, very well-timed Negate against our Sweeper. But I think game 2 was also a great showing of how strong the Merrick's token win con can be in these matchups. Especially, you know, in these long, grindy games where creating inevitable value out of nothing really makes a big difference. That'll be all for the games today. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a nice day.